Lazarus versus Noble at a gigantic Spartak Arena. Who won and why? Let's find out today, right here. Lazarus and Noble, of course, are the eternal rivals in the Guns of Boom esports from Season 1 because both offline events that we had, they were there in the finals. They were fighting against each other. And for two times in double elimination tournaments, they actually went for two grand finals. First, it was Noble who kicked. Uh, first, it was Noble who was kicked down to the loser's bracket, who had to go the whole way through, come up, win the first grand final, and then lose the second one to Lazarus. Then the second time, it was Lazarus who actually went to the loser's bracket, and then they still won both grand finals. It was in Katowice, Poland uh, in last year and also in Los Angeles season one final. Those two uh, gigantic events, they were the ones that we had. And Noble and Lazarus are, of course, the household names at this point. And now they have a third time where they can try and actually decide who's the strongest team, of course. Of course, they both are trying really hard uh, to become better. And they are, I feel like, really truly becoming esports athletes because they are training they are looking for ways to better themselves and they had some roster changes uh, which i'll talk about a little bit later because unfortunately uh, unfortunately for lazarus romeo who was uh, who was for, with them from the beginning he couldn't uh, he couldn't make it uh, to this tournament in particular at the last moment though they had to take a stand in who is of course spleen a really really strong player but still uh, when you have a stand in at the last moment really takes a toll and we'll see that because the results uh, the results of this particular tournament is, is is quite bad for Lazarus because they had and spoiler alert this is a recap we're thinking about why what and how it happened I'm gonna give you the results right now if you don't want to know them please leave the video uh, and if you are staying here don't be mad at me later so Lazarus actually lost 4-0 here they lost 4-0 uh, uh, to Noble uh, and one of the reasons you could cite uh, is actually uh, it, it would actually be uh, the stand-in uh, Spleen, who is an incredible player, but of course it really felt a little bit clunky on the side of Lazarus. But moreover, not only Lazarus have a new player, uh, but uh, Noble also have a new player, and it's Nokia. And it's not because he's a stand-in, but because they've actually enlisted him, recruited him as a, like a young prodigy from an American team. Nokia was one of the best players on Season 1 final. He's very young and he's very talented. Uh, so getting him on the team may be the other reason uh, that Noble was so much stronger than Lazarus today. Let's try to analyze the game. Let's try to find out exactly why couldn't uh, Lazarus win even one map today. Why couldn't they go into their flow? What happened uh, and what was the reason? But without further ado, let's go into the first game, which was, of course, uh, Atrium. It was control points. It looked uh, quite close for a long time. Uh, the players are using the consumables, new consumables uh, that you can use in the Season 2 that we have unlocked. It's G-launchers and flashbangs and many others that change the gameplay uh, quite a bit. And it seemed, it seemed quite even, but uh, after some time has passed, you know, we could clearly see uh, that Noble have been moving around a lot better. Their team movement, their team communication was on another level compared uh, to Lazarus. And Lazarus just couldn't get any point uh, for a long time. The, uh, the Noble actually even went for a triple cap. They went for a triple cap and they managed to hold it. So they've put Lazarus in a situation where they not only do, did they need to make a big comeback, that the only thing they could do for a big comeback was to take back all three points because there was no neutral point uh, and they had to play hard and they just been retaking point after point and they, they even managed to take two points uh, by the end of that battle but that wasn't enough and that wasn't fast enough. It really felt like Lazarus just needed to get into their groove, uh, needed to play smoother, needed to uh, maybe cool their heads a little bit but it just it just didn't seem uh, to connect for them at any uh, point of the map so uh, as far as the weaponry I'd say it was pretty classic with 
uh, people using scouts to get on the points as fast as they can and uh, preferring uh, shotgun battles to any other so there was no uh, no sniping that sometimes you can see on Atrium, it was more about speed. Uh, with assault rifles, uh, usually Odin used uh, for mid-range. Uh, with the consumables, there have not been made any significant uh, multi-eliminations multi uh, in this particular battle. Uh, because there, wa there were a couple of attempts to get a big G launch elimination, but it just never, never paid off. But we'll see in the next battles that there that actually happens a, a couple of times so as you see it's 1200 points to 800 that's a gigantic uh, gigantic lead here on the atrium map on the control points so it seems like it didn't really work out uh, for Lazarus uh, they've been trying really hard and uh, it is quite typical actually for Lazarus to lose the first uh, battle that they fight against beat Noble or maybe any other team because they sometimes take a little bit of time to start up and of course the pressure the pressure is immense when you're playing in a gigantic stadium and there are no other teams there's just you and your opponent and nobody else there because that's, that's the only people everyone came to see it's a, like a big name duel not not like the tournament where you can go through levels and levels and levels so maybe Lazarus were feeling a lot of pressure not to mention that they were of course the champions of the entire first season to be the champions of the entire first season means they have the most pressure on them the most expectations made of them so let's go and see how they try to turn that around in game two let's see it right now okay of course uh, the second game was uh, Team Deathmatch, which is uh, quite different from the Control Points and Atrium uh, specifically because here it's all about the way that you, uh, the, the, your shooting skills, it's about the, the level of your gameplay uh, itself uh, because it's not as much about team movement, but here Noble actually showed, even though it still began quite even, uh, that uh, they can win, they can win in head-on battles because they have been exchanging at first slightly better but that uh, that gap has only been growing uh, since the beginning because they've been just winning uh, team fight uh, after team fight. Uh, Lazarus uh, for some reason were uh, really trying, uh, really starting to separate a lot and uh, Noble, were they were like moving like a, an one organism, they have been uh, not going forward when they shouldn't have. They were uh, keeping close together. They were uh, supporting each other. They were covering each other's backs, uh, just like their previous name suggests to back to back. They haven't been playing as risky uh, as before. Uh, and Noble were very famous for playing very, uh, very risky plays with uh, KM just charging in uh, and trying to flank everyone. But here, uh, as we'll see, they are playing quite defensively. Uh, here, here they are defending their their point, and they're not not letting any any stray uh, Lazarus players uh, come behind them or do anything. As you can see, they have two pairs controlling the map uh, perfectly, and they are 40 points ahead. And that that difference is going to only uh, grow as Lazarus are will be trying to will be trying to flank them uh, and go alone. Uh, and they're just not going to work here. They are uh, simply outmatched uh, uh, at shooting by Noble. Uh, and all around it feels like Noble is uh, like a level above Lazarus uh, this, uh, this tournament at least. And it could be, uh, it could be attributed to the fact that Lazarus doesn't have their, uh, doesn't have their full roster. Uh, but then again, uh, it's still, it is a sport and it is important uh, to be uh, prepared for such situations maybe they need uh, a constant backup player but they're not bringing their best plays uh, to the table today uh, as we we will see uh, some more uh, we will see some more interesting plays here but what I'd like to say the uh, consumables also which are a really big uh, new part of gameplay they are being used here they're not being used to their I'd say to their fullest uh, ac uh, fullest ability because I'm not even sure if all of the grenade launchers have been launched or maybe they haven't dealt uh, enough damage. As you can see, it's like 100 points ahead for Noble and they are not going, they're not getting cocky. They're not getting 
like overconfident. They're not running in. They're still moving together, and they really seem calm. And as we'll maybe be able to see uh, later on, uh, it feels like Lord Mano on the stage was not his stern, uh, commanding, calm self. He was looked a little bit frustrated. Uh, we would see uh, Spleen uh, actually, uh, Spleen actually being maybe the most passionate player on the stage, and Lord Mano getting kind of. Uh, taken aback by the situation, but here it is 2-0 and it is of course the moment where Lazarus really needed to pull together and they're going to do that in a second. They're going to pull together on the third map and of course as we know it's not going to be enough, but it's still it's still incredible to see what they can do even in this uh, horrible, horrible situation for them where they need to bring everything to the table uh, and they need to overcome uh, not only themselves, but also the new noble, the new noble, the improved, the way more, the way more well-played noble, and they just cannot do that. Okay, let's see the third game. The third game is also control points, and here, uh, incredibly, Lazarus actually managed to take uh, point B and keep it for a long time. This is a uh, like the old uh, Lazarus tactic where they. Uh, they take point B and they control all the cho choke points and they're not letting Noble breathe and they are taking more points and they're going to have two points uh, A and B most of the time. We see a G launcher actually, Lord Mano neutralizing KM with a G launcher which is a risky play and it would have a bigger payoff if he actually got more people with it. But it seems to be enough because uh, Noble keeps running in here and Spleen getting another nice uh, G launcher here just because all of Noble were on the point. That's the perfect use for it uh, and th that's the perfect way for them to hold it. And Noble tried to retaliate w with Gonza using a G launcher and it is really, really a warfare tactic where you need uh, to unleash the big damage, the big guns uh, at exactly the right moment. Uh, and it's right here, uh, almost um, almost deeper into mid-game, that they almost lose all three points, and Noble still uh, again goes for the triple cap. And I think how they managed to do that, they actually went around Lazarus. And it really felt like Lazarus were just throwing themselves, th throwing themselves on point B, uh, being very single-minded about it, and, and ad in an admirable way. But it seems like Noble... Uh, often uh, in all of these maps calmly uh, evaluates the situation and just decides to okay so they are blocking us here we're gonna go around we're gonna uh, deal with it this way uh, and they are uh, in those situations uh, winning uh, every time and it feels like they just have more options available to them while Lazarus are just really trying to push uh, through a single point and here it's actually excellency uh, is going for some reason alone on point A uh, and you know you really don't want to do that you never want to go and capture a point uh, alone unless you're absolutely sure the entirety of the opponent's team uh, is already down and here uh, it feels like uh, Lazarus is just crumbling because they are running one at a time at their enemies not doing any significant damage not doing uh, anything uh, important it's just like it feels like they uh, don't know what to do and each player just trying to uh, give it everything he has and hope that it's going to be enough. But of course, uh, Guns of Boom is a lot harder than that. You cannot just uh, believe in yourself and win because you need to work with your team, you need to coordinate. Uh, and if you go into an unfavorable situation, you're not going to win no matter how well you play and no matter how much spirit you have. And as you can see, the point gap, which was very close, uh, grew to almost uh, 300 points uh, in a matter uh, of a minute and it's also uh, ended really really fast uh, and that's just how it goes but both teams are of course incredible and for many guns of boom players they are legends they already are like living symbols and players have been uh, voting for who they are who they think is going to win and as the results uh, suggested it was almost 50 50 it was like 53 percent to 47 percent so the faith in both teams uh, was very high for the Guns of Boom community uh, and look at them they really are uh, legendary in many ways and, and today uh, they are wearing their jerseys they are uh, like they are signed up by professional esports organizations and they are maturing 
as esports teams because what they are doing is not easy. It takes a lot of mental fortitude. It takes a lot of belief in yourself, in your teammates, uh, and in, in, in the skills and just always being open because everything changes and the season two has different, uh, different rules, different gameplay, and you have to adapt. You have to carry the burden of being champions uh, in case of Lazarus and for for Noble they have the burden of being the eternal challengers which is not easy as well because they really want to prove themselves they really want to throw everything they have at Lazarus and finally finally uh, win now this is a moment of absolute despair of course for Lazarus and for anyone who would be in this situation because it's best of seven they're already three maps three maps behind and they need to to win they need to win four maps in a row and that would just be miraculous and taking back that much just mentally it seems like so much work needs to be put in there and you need luck you need strength you need everything and they have been trying really uh, really hard and as we'll see in game four uh, because it's of course uh, it's Europe uh, it's Europe it's also control points. We're here already quite deep into the game and, and Lazarus, unfortunately, uh, they just couldn't bring themselves to to win this one. It, it you could really feel uh, the desperation. You could really feel how much they want to win on this fourth map because they were doing everything they could. But still, it felt a little bit single-minded. It felt a little bit single-minded how they were trying to run in there uh, and trying to uh, to get point B all the time while Noble was circling around them, uh, moving all together, never splitting up, being a group, and they're just they they were like almost it felt like they were tricking them. It was almost felt like they were a mirage. They were like shadows <laughs> going around there uh, while Lazarus just went in and tried to shoot their way out. And it seems this tactic just not going to cut it anymore because Noble, of course, evolved into something uh, beyond what they were before uh, and they were really really just as you can see they are <laughs> celebrating like crazy it means a lot to them it means the world to them because they were trying to beat Lazarus for so long and they couldn't and right here right now in a, in a gigantic stadium they finally finally overcame uh, they overcame that obstacle that they couldn't their rival uh, and really how devastating it would be for Noble to lose for the third time to the same opponent being so close. And as you can see, Nokia is actually doing an incredible uh, an incredible gesture of I love Guns of Boom and I think some <laughs> money throwing around. He's just he's just going crazy. The other Noble players are a little more a little more uh, conserved and here look look at this t-shirt. Look at this t-shirt. It was great. Spleen of course. No, not not too happy because it, it is of course devastating. Nokia, I love God or God. <laughs> yes, this is this is this, this man right here knows how to how, how to do a, a real show. What can I say? It is uh, uh, it is also really incredible how much passion he has for the game. He's of course uh, quite young and he is a very promising player. Uh, KM being uh, a lot older and. Uh, also two aces and two brothers in Noble right now playing right about to uh, lift the trophy and they really deserved it today they really deserved winning this uh, no matter that Lazarus couldn't maybe bring their best game and all of their players uh, to the table today uh, Noble took that chance like it was nobody's business they just really they steamrolled steamrolled Lazarus they never left them a chance and they didn't pull any punches and I think that's respect I think that's respect right there uh, and the guys the guys deserve this uh, celebration and <laughs> the fire show is quite beautiful you can see gigantic screens uh, with their faces with their teams and it is also for the first time and I I believe I believe it is an, uh, an incredible incredible feeling uh, I, I do I do uh, honestly envy them because for them it is also as for us at Guns of Boom just uh, the beginning of a really really big road uh, in esports a long road and we're going to go to even a bigger place and we're going to go to go even further and this uh, stadium is uh, the perfect way the perfect way to start uh, the perfect way to start the second season uh, which is going to be massive which is going to be spectacular 
and it's just it's just uh, I think it's incredible guys and I'm really happy we could see this uh, as you can see uh, I think Noble won because they were the most prepared they were the most determined they put in the work they enlisted a new player they revised their strategy they uh, changed uh, the whole their whole identity just to beat Lazarus and Lazarus unfortunately couldn't bring their best to the table and that's uh, what they get now they have I'm sure great motivation to uh, keep trying and to beat uh, to beat Noble next time so now Lazarus needs to work through the Challenger series through the Pro series to get a ticket to Gods of Boom where Noble already is going so in just several months uh, maybe we'll see another Noble versus Lazarus but for that there needs to be a lot of epic battles happening all over the world and I hope we'll see that very soon and I'm really happy that you guys came in and watched the stream if you haven't yet go watch it now uh, this is just a recap I'm sorry if you just spoiled uh, everything for yourself but go watch it anyway it was epic it was incredible come to our next events and I'll see you on the battlefield